It has been a hot second since I've recorded, so hopefully this works out. Hey everybody, welcome back to my channel, and thank you for bearing with me throughout all of October. This month is going to be a little bit of catch up and a lot of confusion, so I apologize if everything is wrong in this video. Anyway, but what we're going to be doing today is scribbler boxes because I have two of them today. This is what happens when you're gone for almost a month. You get two boxes. So uh, we're going to start with the one that I got last. So I think it's the September box. I'm really, again, I'm really sorry, but uh, here we go. So as ever, uh, the card is already out. So here we go. Here's the scribbler writing contest. Write a short paragraph starting with the sentence, the money is good, there's no denying that, and the contest is already over, but again, as all these are, these are always really good ways to jumpstart uh, a story or a paragraph or anything, so go ahead and do that thing. I swear, it's a good thing that I'm moving places, you know, all the time, otherwise I don't think that I'd ever get rid of this stuff ever, it's like Easter grass. So first thing we have is three highlighters. I actually kind of need these. I had a bunch of highlighters when I was in university and I traveled with them and the whole thing, but apparently they did not make it here. And I don't know if I threw them out because they were old and dry and crusty or if they just didn't make it here. So anyway, I now have highlighters. Oh, these are super cute. Okay, so um, they're colored pencil, like sticky tabs and they're they're in like every color um they're very pastel-y but let me let me open these up for us three hours later yeah they're they're little tiny pencils they're super cute and uh let, let's let's peel one off i'm never gonna use pink because i'm not a pink person so here we go Okay, they're a little hard to get off. They're like very, very thin and tiny. But the sticky actually seems pretty good. I don't know how I'm going to be using these, but I will try to find a use for them because they're very cute and I need to start marking up my pages. Um, this is probably not going to be up anyway, but in case you are interested, in case you are able to make it at some time, it is the editorial director, uh, An Schulp. Shulep, I will decide. I will let you decide how that. Oh, I should have said that name. Um, she's the editorial director of Mont Lake Romance. She has over 20 years of book business experience, starting at her local Walden Books in suburbs of Seattle. She went on to hold a wide variety of roles in publishing, including sales, marketing, and account management positions at Penguin Group and Random House before joining Amazon Publishing in 2011. The link is ghostcribbler.com/autumn. Be good. And it doesn't say that it won't, it'll only be up for X amount of days, so it might still be valid. Like, go there and find out. Ooh, there is a book nerd pin. Okay, I guess I'm gonna take it out of the package. So, book nerd, book nerd pin, yeah. Again, I like, I don't really collect like these vinyl pins, but I, I, I like it, I like it enough. I, I need to like find like a pin board or something so that when I do get them and when I do like them, like I'll have somewhere to like display them. This month's writing passport is about endings. Introduce yourself as a writer. That is what they say. So that is the thing. The author this month is Melinda Lay. Get through her career highlights. Um, and what she says about writing the perfect ending. So, uh, I mean, as it is a, a thing about endings, um, this is a very structural pamphlet, um, but it seems to be more than just the ending. Like, you need to identify, like, the entire Fichtean curve of your novel before you can really get to your ending, and that's kind of what I'm getting from my skim through of this. I mean, I, I am very interested to see what the author says about endings and if that has anything to do with what the other half of this pamphlet says, but I'm not really interested in this one, perhaps. I'm a terrible person. Inside the publishing process, as ever, uh, you'll find developmental editorial notes for Melinda Lay's Save Your Breath, 
According to her editor, Melinda typically turns in a quote, very clean and thorough first drafts. That means when she receives her editorial notes, they're typically focusing on refining the suspense and smoothing out pacing and maintaining continuity. They look to be like the page and then the edits on the bottom are footnoted. That's kind of cool. Oh, I guess that's just a really thick page. Yeah, this um, this particular paper seems to be a lot thicker than they normally give me, but th that's fine. Um, next one will be apparently World Building 2. I don't know what that means exactly, but um, yeah, that'll be good. Next, it's another notebook, story of my life. Oh, if a story is in you, it has to come out. Ah, it's another one of these where it has like, a sentence at the at the top and then blank pages. Ooh. Also, some other things. Top 10. So you have this. Oh, but also young adulthood and firsts. Okay. Here here here's what it says right here. Every life is packed with stories worth telling, and no one can tell them better than the person who lived them. But when you sit down to put it all into writing, where do you begin? The blank page is the most intimidating and procrastination inspiring part of any project. I I never feel that way, but I guess that's just me. Luckily, this notebook clears that hurdle for you. In its pages, you'll find prompts and exercises written by a published author to help you bring your stories to life. So I guess this is supposed to help you write a memoir of a sort? Yeah, because like even at the back, it's like retrospective stuff. It, it feels like a great notebook, and I don't mind having the exercises on top like this and everything, but at the same time, like, a lot of a lot of the time I use these for my own purposes and when I have interruptions like the top tens which there seem to be a number of in like as I'm just flipping through and then like the the young adults adults childhood and family like I don't know if I'm gonna ever use this which is a shame because again like I, I like notebooks I need to start collecting them again I'm also I guess kind of confused as to why this is in the endings box like I don't know it's it's nice I'm just this box is confusing me a little bit maybe I'm just crazy but it, it's confusing me a bit and of course last but not least is Save Your Breath by Melinda Lay also the book plate which I will put somewhere. So, there may be more to her book than meets the eye, is what it says. When true crime writer Olivia Cruz disappears with no signs of foul play, her new boyfriend, Lincoln Sharp, suspects the worst. He knows she didn't leave willingly and turns to attorney Morgan Dane and PI Lance Kruger to find her before it's too late. As they dig through Olivia's life, they are shocked to discover a connection between her current book research on two cold murder cases and the suicide of one of Morgan's prospective clients. As Morgan and Lance investigate, the number of suspects grows, but at times running out to find Olivia alive. When danger comes knocking at their door, Morgan and Lance realize that they may be the killer's next targets. Just over 300 pages. And it, it's another one of these like super like velvety doe skin books, which just I I I can't stop touching these. I love these so much. They're so they're so pretty. All right, and now where to put the book plate? Oh, I didn't even realize it even says like Amazon Publishing right there. So on the dedication page, I guess we'll put it right there because everything else is like very all over the page so there we go so that was october and now on, no sorry this was september and now on to october oh okay let me use the things that i have been given all right oh <gasps> there's a candle in here but we'll get to that in just a sec i think there's swedish fish in here too but hold on hold on okay getting ahead of myself this is the scribbler writing contest and it is write a short paragraph that includes the word cheesecake and cadaver our favorite submission will win a bonus gift and this will end on 11 11. so there we go so they couldn't call them swedish fish but they're 100 percent swedish fish <laughs> Hi, no high fructose corn syrup, no synthetic colors, originally, er, sorry, naturally flavored, and vegan. 
ah, tapioca syrup, that might be it. I am not a gummy person, but my husband is, so I'm going to toss them at him and he'll probably devour it whole. Yes. Okay, so yes, there is a candle. It is Writer on Fire Pumpkin Apple and Molasses. And made exclusively for Scribbler Box by Novelty Yours Candles. Oh. Okay. You know that smell walking by the Yankee Candle Shop? No matter where you go in the world, whatever, that smell, that smell is this. Like, it, it's definitely pumpkin spicy thingy, but it's overly sweet. Yeah, like, this just reminds me of the Yankee Candle Store. I can't really smell a whole lot of apple. It's kind of on the, it's kind of on like the back end of the smell, but it's, it's very heavily syrupy. Like a pumpkin spice latte, but like you just smelled the syrup and you didn't have the coffee in it. But that being said, I am so excited for this. I, I don't think, have I ever gotten a candle in a box? I don't think so. So this, this is my first candle and I'm super excited for it because I love candles. All right, uh, next, you are invited for an exclusive chat with little uh, editor, Hafiza Get Getter. Little A editor? I don't know. I'm, I'm a terrible human being, but here we go. Born in Zaria, Nigeria, Hafiza Getter's poetry and prose have appeared in appeared or is forthcoming in the New Yorker, McSweeney's Indelible in the Hippocampus, Tin House, Narrative Magazine, Gulf Coast, Boston Review, Los Angeles Review of Books, Long, Long Reads, and Roxanne Gay's Gay Magazine, among others. Okay, I'm just gonna like show this to you and you can, you can tell me. That is a long, long list of things and I, I don't even know at this particular moment what all those are. She is an editor for, oh, Little A. Okay, Little A is the the company. And so she is an editor for Little A and Topple Books from Amazon Publishing and serves on the poetry committee for the Brooklyn Book Festival. Okay, so Little A editor. I'm like, I don't even know how to say that, but there we go. Um, it will be at 11 a.m. Eastern on the 14th. Ghostscribbler.com slash leaves. Again, I will show this to you if it ever decides to... So it is ghostscribbler.com slash leaves. And again, it doesn't say that the, um, the recording is going to go away, so I'm assuming that it's going to be there forever, which is kind of cool. It is... You buy, you be gives. One for you, one for me. These journals donate one item to a US classroom in need. So, oh, and it even has a little thing. Um, so yeah, it's it's a it's a notebook. Oh, it's three notebooks. They're little tiny ones. Can you, I don't know if you can see that. But it's two blue and one uh, brown. They're they're super cute. How many how many pages are there? 32 line pages per journal. Collect your thoughts, perfect for on-the-go notes and lists. Oh, you're so cute. And like, the little dude on the front, the little toucan, is hilarious. I love it. If you want to go support them, join us at ub.com, y-o-o-b-i.com. All right, more, more orange Easter grass. Again, world building part two, whatever that means. Right, you have something worth saying. Word from Scribbler. Okay, so uh, they have a step program on how to perhaps get material for your world building, world building, but step three, step three right there is Netflix and chill, um, which is exactly what it sounds like. Movies and TV are always a great place to uh, start your world building or at least get some like visual representation of what you want. So we're doing career highlights for our featured author, Marco Rafala. Rafala? I, I'm not, I'm sorry. I, I'm butchering all the names today, I'm so sorry. And a Q&A on his world building, or why he, how he does it. So yeah, there we go, there's the passport. Inside the publishing process, this, act, this actually looks really, really spiffy. 
in especially in comparison to the ones that I've had before, like, and their, their paper quality is getting better, let's just say that. So, inside you'll find a second or maybe even third passive edits for Marco Raffala. Raffala? I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Here's a note from the author himself regarding the edits. It's literally like an email. Like. And it, on the inside it looks like, you know, that's the regular page and then like, that's all the book edits that was done, or that were done, excuse me. And uh, November's theme is science fiction, in case you are curious. All right, and it looks like a number of goodies at the, here at the bottom with the thing. So here, first off we have this beauty, which I, I dig this so much. I, I love this, look, look at it. Look at the skull. Look at how pretty it is. Look at look at it. Look at it. It's wonderful. You know, so I've started up sort of my bookstagram thing. Insert promo here. But like I'm still trying to figure out like how I'm going to do this. So I think I'm going to start incorporating these cuz I think I have all the these type of things saved from the boxes before. So I think I'm going to start using these. Next is Melini Sicily. And it's a very beautiful postcard. I don't know what I'm gonna do with this. <laughs> Again, it's it's really pretty, and like maybe I just I, I make it into like a bookstagram thing. Uh, and last, I guess, but not least, is How Fires End, a novel, which looks like this and again is super soft and wonderful. Um, we also have the the book plate again by Amazon Publishing, as well as the accompanying bookmark that looks very similar. First off, let's see what this is about. A dark secret born out of World War II lies at the heart of a Sicilian-American family in its emotional and weeping saga of guilt, revenge, and ultimately redemption. After soldiers vacate the Sicilian hillside town of Malili, in the summer of 1943, the locals celebrate giving thanks to their patron Saint Sebastian. Amid the revelry, all it takes is one fateful moment for the destiny of nine-year-old Salvatore Vassallo, Vassallo? I'm not sure, um, to change forever. When his twin brothers are killed playing with an unexploded mortar shell, Salvatore's faith is destroyed. As the family unravels and, and fear ignites among their neighbors that the Vassalo name is cursed. One tragedy begets another. Desperate to escape it, this haunting legacy, Salvatore accepts the help of an Italian soldier with fascist ties who ushers him and his sister Nella to a new beginning in America, in Middletown, Connecticut, in the immigrant neighborhood known as Little Malili, these three struggle to build new lives for themselves, but a dangerous choice or keep their secrets hidden erupts in violence decades later. When Salvatore loses his inquisitive American-born son, David, they all learn too late the price sons pay for their father's wars. Okay, that was, that was a rough and tumble, but here we are. Dude, this has like three pages of blurbs from from other authors, like, not even like short blurbs either. And again, on the dedication page, I'll put that there because everything else seems to be pretty uh, stuck there. And it apparently begins with Nella. So. so how I feel about this book is I don't want to read it. It's not really my thing. However, considering the dedication seems to be very personal and perhaps is inspired by uh, family stories or history, I think that I'm probably going to need to keep this around for a bit. I've had plans to write sort of historic fiction based on experiences that my Japanese family has endured, experienced, whatnot, and while this is definitely more of a thriller than I will be writing about necessarily, I think that this could possibly take a lot of historic context and make it 
easy to digest and there there will be lessons that I can learn from this book. Um, I guess that's everything. I honestly, I am super excited for this freaking candle that smells like the freaking Yankee candle shop. That was two months worth of boxes. Um, thank you so much for watching. If you liked this video, please give it a thumbs up and hit the subscribe button and the notification bell down below for content that will be similar but better than this. Again, I apologize if this is just a terrible video. Uh, I need to get back into the swing of things, so here we are. But thanks so much for watching again, and I will see you in the next video. All right, bye. She said it will never go away. I know there is nothing left to say. Can we try to hold on just for now? Even if we don't know how to show them what we're all about. Oh.